Welcome everyone to We Talk Games. I am Mark, which some of you might know me as Paul Mint Peeper. I am Bob. Everyone just knows me as WTG Bob. Um, Hetro, aka James this time. <laughs> James this time changed not up. No Jim. James, you feeling enough very proper mood this time? No, I forgot that. I caught myself Jim last time. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Uh, I don't think Jim actually listened to the last podcast, to be honest, because he knew he was only on it for about two minutes. So. I did listen to it, I listened to it in work. Aye? Uh, yeah, then people would come in and say, like, what are you listening to? What, nothing, it's just that wireless. <laughs> <laughs> well, today today we are covering uh, Resident Evil games. Oh, I don't know if they could have guessed from the, yeah. the hint we left at the, in the, lad po- the last podcast. Yeah. The wee, wee tiny hint, that might become a thing. It might not, I don't Probably know. Probably not, because we mm. forget. haven't really decided what to play yeah. next. And also, what might be the giveaway could be, you know, if this is YouTube you're watching it on, there's a big massive header right now saying we talk games, Resident Evil franchise. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, so we're, we're covering uh, just about every game we can cover on the Resident Evil franchise front, um, which is obviously all the main games, so all the numbered games, uh of the main series, but also some of the, the, the more gimmicky outsider games. Mm-hmm. The uh, jacket, the, the privilege of playing a couple of them, at least yeah. a couple of absolute raspers. Uh, <laughs> I get given a few as well. Well, I think we, sh- we should actually run down the list of games that we all decided. This is, we decided one night on Skype going, yeah, we're going to do Resident Evil. It was Jim's idea. Jim said we will play Resident Evil. So, first of all, like, fuck it, list of games. Oh, have you got the list? Of yeah, them? I've got the list here. And uh, so we're like, okay, Mark, being the host, he got he got his <laughs> games first, and it was Resident Evil Three, Resident Evil Four, Resident Evil Outbreak, Resident Evil Revelations, and Resident Evil Six. Mm-hmm. So Mark got that. Jim, who was like, yeah, gotta fucking play Resident Evil. Resident Evil's like the game, the franchise. Yeah. Jim went uh, cool. So Jim got Resident Evil Two, Resident played Evil it. Code Veronica, played it. Resident Evil Five, played it. Resident Evil. Operation Raccoon City. No, I no. That. he's never heard of it, and he's played those games in the past. Because how much time have you put into Resident Evil this t- this month? A good solid twenty minutes. Yep, <laughs> this is this is what we're going to get for Jim. But it's all right because as we know, Jim has a photographic memory. Yep. He he'll be able to just remember the games, you know, amazingly. I, I got given Resident Evil Director's Cut, which I then chose for the Resident Evil Sega Saturn edition. Uh, mm. Resident Evil Zero. Which I've yet to play, but I've. What have you played in that one? GameCube. GameCube, excellent. I will play in that GameCube. Uh, Resident Evil 5, which I was meant to play with Hetero, but Hetero didn't want to play it because he said it was shit. It was shit. Uh, Resident Evil Gaiden, 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 whatever. Gaiden. <laughs> Ninja. Played that, and uh, Resident Evil Outbreak 2, but I haven't been able to find a decent copy of that yet to actually play, and we will get on to it. Uh, but um, is that is that no there was other games we decided we will try to play in which I've managed to get my PS1 working now so we can play others like Survivor and then PS2 games are like Resident Evil Survivor 2 Deadly Aim yeah, Umbrella it's Crumbles, all the, the light gun games all light basically. gun games and also there was a 3DS game that now none of us have well, no I played it Revelations no that was we're talking about Mercenaries 3D alright I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, it was like a mercenary mission from... You've just done as much work as I have for this podcast. Hey, at least he's researching games. what... <coughs> I just get assigned I games. Like, yeah, you can get the four. Five, fifteen years ago? No, but... but yeah, so... One, a while ago. <laughs> that's the games uh, we're, we're trying to cover. This will probably be... It'll either be like a multi-part, like three or four episodes, and we might break it down and post it every... Maybe every fortnight or something, or... Yeah. We may do two parts. I don't know. It just depends how much we can cover because it's a, a bit of a nightmare to get this all together right here, right now. And we thought it would be a really good idea to go. We'll do a podcast a month. It will be dead easy to play so many to play games in a month and then come back and report on them. Turns out we've pretty much bitten off more than we can chew with <laughs> yeah. the Resident Evil franchise. Because first of all, I never thought there was that many games to start with. We kind of all just went one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we thought we'll throw in a couple of other games. Absolute shitload. It's yeah. like we had to go about fucking five games each. Yeah, minimum, man. All of them. Yeah, no, yeah, Jim played all of them. And you'll be able to hear his insightful comments coming up now, so we'll get to our first game. Oh, and before we get into the gaming, I uh, just want to say a big thank uh, thank you to, and a shout out to, uh, fucking OSW, uh, 
uh, MFX podcasts. Uh, who else? Basically, most of the MFX galaxy who yeah. actually turned around and gave us retweets and. I think yeah. maybe the only people actually listen to our, our thing. So <laughs> yeah, it's so awesome. So if you've if you've uh, liked what you heard in the first part and are listening to us in the second part, awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, but definitely yeah. give a shout out to uh, Duckman and Serene Trumps for giving us a little bit of publicity on their podcast. Not they didn't have to do it for us. It was very nice of them. And uh, hashtag merch for heaven. Yeah. If, uh, <laughs> oh, <for fuck's> <laughs> if you want to get into heaven, everybody, you need to go to. Uh, mfx.spreadshirt.com and get yourself a nice mfx t-shirt or mug <laughs> a or mug yeah. anything uh, right enough for the shilling <laughs> on we don't get anything from that okay so thanks very much guys uh, all these have been really really awesome really good feedback as well so time to open our cans so our first game obviously Resident Evil the original Number one, mm-hmm. what's your first memories of that? My first memory of it is actually not playing the game, but the PlayStation official magazine, uh, going into John Menzies, it was at the time, or Mingus, if you're a total tool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know where people used to call it John Mingus? No, I definitely. Number wanks. Um, but I remember, That's why I went out of business. Yep. Well, they're in the, that's the way people driving about in this, the grey bus the grey vans that say John Menzies on the side of it it's the same company the Hong, Hong they, they carry about the magazines for other shops anyway <laughs> <laughs> so back to Resident <laughs> Evil my very first uh, memory of that was I used to get the Playstation magazine every single month for the demo discs mm-hmm. five or a whip five or a whip back in the day really back then right, oh, it was five. five quid for the magazine that was quite a bit uh, five bar there. and it was like three years going mum 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 who you get is this like right okay shut the fuck up <laughs> it's a demo disc with fucking 12 demos that took 20 minutes to fucking load but uh, anyway I remember seeing this green cover and it had a fucking weird face on it mm-hmm. I think like, wow that's crazy that is I need to see this and it was Resident Evil and it had a zombie head and the, the text at the front was like a bandied over it wasn't just straight it was right all kind of round the zombie's head bent and it was like Resident Evil magazine well it was, like, it was an official Playstation magazine and the zombie and on the t- disc wasn't a demo of the game but the FMV the opening FMV I uh-huh. think it's maybe still pictures after it so got that and actually get my mum to buy it because I think it was a either a 15 or an 18 certificate for the magazine parental guidance so Terry yeah. got it and uh, got home popped it in the PS1 which was in my grand's house upstairs in a bedroom going fuck your grand was a gamer? nah that's just where it got kept for some fucking reason on a tilt tea tree what the fuck I don't know it was the very no, old like an old like, I was a used to wheel the, wheel the things in and out like see back in the days like you can wheel the TV in and out the room hi there was a telly like seeing school I was trying to say that did you, did you actually just live in a school no it was a tiny thing know. it must have bedroom upstairs just like, borrow the TV <laughs> a bedroom that was a few it was a problem about three foot high and it had wheels on it then the place thing was sitting underneath and you had a big telly sitting on top of you and you could we like about the house, so Aye. that was in my grand's room. So I popped in and uh, Resident Evil. It's like, oh, we need to see this. So you had to spin around the diff. You remember the demos? It all came up by menu. They pushed left and right and mm-hmm. spin around to the next like, load. Done that. Resident Evil it was black and white FMV of uh, real people running about. It's like Jesus, man, that's um, this is a movie. It was so good, and it's the original. You see the the bad CGI helicopter in the sky flying away, and then they go wait. Don't go! It goes away and then it starts off. You hear the, the, the creepy noises of oh, you don't know what it is, and then the, the dog jumps at you, and you're like, oh, Jesus, man, this is fucking unreal. But the dog, when the dog jumps at you, there's a black bar over its mouth. It was all heavily, heavily censored. And um, I was like, I need to get this. Was the dog like dropping F bombs? No, it was censored. Uh, it wasn't a thingy, it wasn't a playable demo, it was a video. Was it just the, the, video, just the yeah. FMV? It was the opening sequence. And it, this was, the magazine was based around this game, and it was the demo you got was just the opening sequence, which was heavily doctored compared to the actual yeah. one then, you get on the disc, which was then also heavy edited to, yeah. I think, the, reg- the first time anyone got to see the original full colour version wasn't Japan wasn't Britain it was a PC release mm-hmm. several years after it actually came yeah. out it was a PC release and they had the uncut 
version that you can fire it into YouTube, that's what I've watched. No, it. Because they, they sold a director's cut right before Resident Evil 2 came out. We won't jump too far ahead, obviously, but no, they no, sold that, a, aye, and that wasn't completely uncut either, though. No, that was uh, that still, was still black and white as well. No, it wasn't black. I mean, it had, but see, there's certain scenes it like, cut I right up, before. Yeah, the gun. Yeah, you that, see the hand instead. I of, could be wrong. No, they, could, that's the one about. That's what's cut from it as well. Yeah. Because you see that one and. I think everyone's seen it and they pick up the gun and yeah. there's a hand attached to it. Well, you, I always thought it was just a hand attached to a body. It's like, oh, there's a gun, picked it up, and the hand, one was still in the body, but if you watch the uncut version, mm-hmm. there's actually a bone hanging off it. Yeah. There's like one of those stupid fake arms. Aye. Oh, I've cut my arm on the door. <laughs> oh, he's got an arm off. <laughs> oh, they went to the Tower of London, they've got that there. Yeah. Uh, so they've done that. And how many was, times, how many times did you watch that video? That demo desk, yeah. I think I actually just, because I think it was quicker to reset and push start than it was to go back to the demo because it played like the outro not the outro but it was like a loading screen and you had to be really or something but I remember thinking it was like the crows like Mm -hmm. the crows at the top of the mansion it was like seeing the the top layer of the mansion on the Mm -hmm. the carpeted bit shooting crows but then you never fought crows there Mm, that's true right and I thought it's like (gasps) they've pegged his eyeballs out but it wasn't it was a clip falling I always thought it was his eyeball. Aye. Because they blacked the, black the face out. The, right, like yeah. The scent, like the old sensor bars, it's just the black, like the yeah, just big eyes black bars. Like that, it's just, and the clip falls, I was like, the crows are bloody wet and pecked his eyes out. <laughs> then, um, what was that, about three weeks later, we managed to get the game? Uh, because I remember, thing, uh, things I remember about it as well, um, adverts got banned as well in magazines and in bus stops as well, because it was... Yeah the big talk about the bloodbath and there was an actual like, bath full of blood I was like that's right I need to play this game because it seemed so cool so the advertisements and um, I think they got around it in the actual game also they, it wasn't three weeks later when it came out later and they went oh god they banned these adverts but then they went well the bath is still in the game but in the game anyway it was green blood I think I think it was like it was meant to be green zombie blood in this bath uh, I think it was just a dirty bath. Yeah, that's what oh I was Because it was like yeah. a plant creature or something. Because you, you pulled it. out the plug and uh, it, was a key. it was a small key to yeah. unlock shit, which was the uh, most popular. I don't really know. I mean, I don't know the major differences. I mean, I know. I, I, most people probably know if they know the Resident Evil trivia, but it's like. I know that the, the idea for the game originally was is a first person shooter mm-hmm. that was before they started even developing anything the whole idea was right we'll develop a first person shooter and this is going to be zombies blah 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 but the hardware wasn't there but then they changed it slightly they were like oh let's third person <coughs> basically it's like oh that alone the dark game is pretty good for it's time let's do something but you know decent have you uh, ever seen the one in the dark I've played it I used to own it I watched it was Rachel played on it, and a full LP. My God, what a pile of dog yep. duck that game it's, is! It's it's horribly controlled. But Resident Evil basically took that and just turned yeah, it into it, uh, yeah. I mean, everybody goes on about how bad the, the original tank controls were, but Jesus Christ, you should play alone in the dark if you know what bad controls are. But now the that my main memory, I think everybody's main memory about Resident Evil, first time playing it, my cousin had his PlayStation round, so we were all sat round. I think he rented it from like Global Video, the game, right? And we were all sat round playing it, we were all really into it, even though he was the only one playing it. Uh, we were all sat, there was about three, four of us sat round the TV watching him, and we got to the usual scene that most people go on about. The dogs jump through the window and we all get a good jump, a good laugh and a good scare from it. The cheapest scare yep. ever. Yeah, and it was awesome. Honestly, at this moment in time, I don't think we actually, I, I don't think I ever really played a game this, that made you jump. this yeah. cinematic. No, yeah. like, and it's, I mean, it's not, looking back at it, at it now, it's laughable, but, you know, a game that had Characters interacting with each other during cutscenes, but in game cutscenes, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a mystery around it because you don't know what's going on in this creepy mansion. Uh, you know, I, that's my main memories is that, and also dying a lot. I think. Yeah. I think I died quite a bit. <coughs> Apologise for my coughing. I've decided to record with the cold. Yeah. Uh, one thing as you were saying there about the dogs. One thing I remember the game. The game does very well is the the use of music. Mm-hmm. And it, because the very first time that you run through that corridor, you're not paying attention. You've fought one zombie in the game thus far, so you open the door, go through the next bit. You're walking through or running, whatever, and then you hear the smash. And you're like, "What the hell is that?" And then that really high adrenaline music kicks in. Mm-hmm. Kind of yeah. dance. It's like it is. It's like a weird, almost 
slightly techno. So you have to. It's like oh Jesus, so that gets your heart racing, the adrenaline pumping, the actual playing the game. I mean, that used to scare the absolute crap out of me, and uh, it was unreal. It was, I just remember doing it the very first time. Then if your mates came around, they hadn't played it before, and you hadn't told them you'd go. You do the first wee bit and show them, and they go, oh, and you're like, do you want a shot? Do I play Resident Evil? He's yeah. Like, Oh, aye, sorry. Just go through here, walk through here. You don't need to run, just walk. Very first time, everybody jumped at it, going, Yeah, jokes on you. Yeah. Tools. <laughs> but if there was a YouTube back then, everybody would have had a, a YouTube video of what, taping, taping oh, somebody, yeah. you no, know, playing it. Uh, YouTube, like, what is it? Wait, a React video or something? Yeah, or it's like, like, yeah, it'd be one of those things. Uh, before we actually go into the, the, the actual discussion of the gameplay and stuff, uh, which I think, Bob, you'll be covering because you've just recently replayed it. Yep. But uh, I will give this wee tidbit, and I can't remember where I've seen this or picked this up from. Probably one of those did you know gaming videos. Mm. I had no idea until about two days ago that, see the scene, that I've, obviously the famous scene where you go in and you see your very first zombie and mm-hmm. it turns around. Say you go through that doorway... But and and you go further down the hallway to get to that zombie. Say you don't. Uh, so you go through the doorway, but you don't go down that hallway. You go back. Oh, the zombie. Right, back. and you go back through the, the hallway. So you keep going. It's like three, four times you go back. The zombie. One of the times we go back in the room, the hallway with Barry Burton. The zombie will actually come through the door. Right, mm-hmm. and obviously the, the scene plays out as normal. Oh, what is it? And it's like. But then if you go back round, and this is only in the original PlayStation 1 version, by the way, not any of the remakes, you'll back, back round to see the body of uh, one of the staff Kenneth. members. Yeah, I think it's Kenneth, isn't it? Uh, he's, he's, now missing his, he's now missing his legs. Zombies what? Eh? The, the zombie has ate his legs, and the only way for you to see that is to act like a dick, going back and forth through the... Like, wasting time, essentially, before yeah. seeing that zombie. Uh, I did not know that. I watched a video of it, and I did double check, I didn't just watch the video and go, oh my god, it's, this is the realest real thing I've ever seen. But yeah, apparently it's true. It's uh, if I remember dicking about and going in and out the doors, but I never knew his legs disappeared. Yeah, his legs disappear, And it's only in the original versions of the game, not uh, in any sort of the re-release or, or... I don't think it's even in any of the digital version. versions and stuff. Mm-hmm. But there you go. So, uh, yeah, let's let's get to it. Let's get to the, the your notes there, because okay. I see plenty of them. Yeah, as usual, again. Paper, because paper's better than the laptop. Eh, uh, it's not really. But I'll be play. I played through. I didn't want to sit and just play through Resident Evil One on the PS One because I've done it a million times. I thought I'll switch up. Got my Sega Dreamcast, so not my Dreamcast, my Sega Saturn. So I thought I'll fire through that Sega Saturn edition, which came out in October '97. But the PS One came out basically a year beforehand. It was August '96. A whole year mm-hmm. between the yep. release. I don't know if PlayStation why, why had that a... Or maybe they had some had sort of... or whatever for a while on it. Well, you know, they sh- later on they shafted Nintendo for numbers of games. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it wouldn't... If, uh, but that would be obvious. Well, I didn't realise they'd done it with the Resident Evil 1 if there was like, a time-based um, exclusivity uh, to that. Were they out at the same time as Saturn and PlayStation? Aye, that was the console one. Aye, Saturn was out before the PlayStation 1 shows you how much research I put into these podcasts because that was uh, that's what pissed off developers about the Saturn because Sega were like ah, it's coming out in 6 months time then they were like when's the PS1 out? <laughs> actually boys it's out, it's out next month <laughs> but what? <laughs> but I uh, so I so I played it and uh, the very first thing I thought when I turned it on was like as we said already we've waxed lyrical about how good the the FMV was mm-hmm. back in the day so I'd done that and watched it and I was like this looks kind of grainy is it even worse you would say? Yeah, maybe? so I thought that's like it kind of looked bad. Didn't like it. Well, I didn't like it, but I was like, it kind of looks different. Maybe it was just nostalgia. And then uh, when I checked into the actual gameplay, the characters looked different as well. More chunkier. Um, look through it and like, they're kind of fat looking, but they look slightly different. Their clothing's slightly different. Like, I think it's got more texture or more details, slight details on Chris mm-hmm. and Jill's uniforms than they do in the actual PS1 version. The zombies look slightly fatter. So it's, it's a little bit different. There's like small things like the zombies have got actual blood on their clothes. Yeah. And like Chris has got extra pockets in his trousers and I think on his uh, utility jacket yes. or whatever it is. So I noticed that and uh, <clears throat> played through it. It's basically, it's exactly the same game as, as uh. on the original. For me anyway, apart from something we'll get into later on. 
But yeah, the other thing as well, slight differences is probably when you shoot the gun, the smoke that comes out, it seems a lot more pixelated than it did on the PS1. It's little small things like this that kind of make the well, game... What would be, see, the, the loading times between... Loading uh, took longer as well on this arm. Yeah. Everything seemed to take longer, seemed to... I don't know if maybe it took longer because they had a load more details, as a like, detail on the characters or whatever. Mm, that's strange though, isn't it? Is yeah, it's the fact that it's came out a year, well, 14 months after the original, and is slower, doesn't look as good, like, FMV-wise. The characters look better, I'd say that, maybe. Possibly. You could... <laughs> I went back and then I looked at original PS1 ones and I, I kind of prefer the Sarts. It looks a bit chunkier. It feels a bit... looks a bit better. Yeah. But fmv wise stuff, it's loading times. It's a bit, a bit well, worse how's off. The, the Saturn controls, how, how would that control? Then? Perfect. Perfect. Because that's what I was worried about. Because I remember um, you, Mark and James had spoke about it saying, oh, we've been playing it and the controls are terrible. Aye. Like, oh, it's dead clunky and... It's nothing. You're just going against everything you play nowadays, because the camera, the, the camera, only th- basic thing is camera moves about the room. You don't really. Mm-hmm. I know you can, but you only get one angle to a certain point, and then the camera will switch probably ninety degrees to a different angle. So doing that, and uh, I was like, "Fucking hell!" Soon as I started playing it, maybe five minutes of it. I mean, that's. I remember how this plays, and I've no problem whatsoever completing it. Yeah, got through it, finished it. Um. Loved it, loved every second of it, but um, I'd say that the music's different in it as well. Really? Yeah, that's probably the, the thing that is the major difference. Is it difference. completely different or does it just sound different? Yeah, it's different music. Aye. Yeah, it's actually different like, composed music for the game, as far as I'm aware, like, listening to it and then listening off stuff and reading a slight little bit about it, but yeah, it's different music. That's probably the main difference between the Saturn and PlayStation versions. That's weird. Do, do, did they maybe do that just to be different? Like, as in, oh, well, this is exclusive to the Saturn version? I, t- I don't know if they actually did, because I've got the original case and stuff, so I've looked at it, it doesn't say uh, exclusive. No, ex- it's not like nowadays where you get an Xbox One exclusive right. compared to a PS4 exclusive, it's got different content on it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's nothing like that. It doesn't say that this is any different. You just play it by ear, I guess, and you go, well, it sounds different now. I looked it up and it did have different music on it. Hmm. I don't know if it's the music maybe Capcom wanted to initially use and that but I didn't have time to kind of rush it out a little bit more or that's strange that's that is definitely a weird one uh, I'll, obviously I don't I, s- I knew there was a Saturn version of the Resident Evil game but like I'll know nothing about Saturn games really well, like the only um, <clears throat> negative about it was the fact that it's the same as the Dreamcast if anyone's played the Dreamcast the battery dies in it uh, in the actual uh, inside the unit. console, yeah. Yeah, so I was playing through the game, went to the save room, saved my game. Fine, I'll start it again. Oh, I'll play it tomorrow. Turn the system off. Went to the yeah, so start up again. Got my pen and paper out to take notes, as I do. Turned it back on. No game save. Does the Saturn not use memory cards? It's, I've got the memory unit at the back. Right. But it's used if you have a battery as well, because then you can export it onto that. Mm. So it's a... So, Fucked you. So, <laughs> so, so, so the first day I went right, sat out, played it, brilliant. I was like, this is fucking awesome. I was taking it, used to it at the time, saying, oh, I'm loving Resident Evil, it's really good. Saved it, next day went into play, I went, no save. Back in, I thought, right, I'll check the memory card. Oh, there's nothing on that. Damn, what a pain in the dick. So I, th- I think I threw a bit of a hissy fit, turned it off, I was like, I'm not playing this game, it's terrible. And then I went to the pin shop the day after and bought like a thousand batteries for a quid <laughs> for, my, for my Sega Saturn. Popped it in, saved the date, worked perfect, saved it, worked fine from there on it. Aye. I think sat completed it one sitting because the game isn't very long. No, well, how long was that? Was it <coughs> one sitting? Uh, one sitting, I'd say about four hours max, and that's going through, aye. like going, oh, how do you, I don't remember how to do this. And I could probably fire through me, up until probably, uh, what do you call them? The, the plant I've got his name yeah the, the weird plant creature yeah. in the in the room and then you need to fire the bazooka at him yeah so I've done that You can I can go up to there without having to look at some sort of a walk through or even just going off memory going this is what you do that's what you do know what keys open what doors mm-hmm. so that was really cool and I completed it again the game is what 96 it came out almost 20 years old now holy shit because um, that's it I, was, I remember Della Run I was sitting, I was looking at it going, oh God, this is Raccoon City, 1997. 
I remember sitting in my grand's house playing it and it was it was like 1997 this is 96 this is going to happen next year I was in primary 7 in school going oh man by the time I'm in first year zombies will have taken over Raccoon City which I didn't know was a fictional city yeah you were on the dialer <laughs> like, like, phoning up hello Mr President <laughs> 999 hello no actually can I phone the operator and go yep can you put me through to the child line I'm in a bit of trouble here we need the zombie patrol also my fucking TV and consoles trapped in my grandma's room <laughs> yeah it's trapped in my grand's house on a tea trolley <laughs> I'm sure we've got a picture of it somewhere but um yeah, so I completed it really uh, good. The game still gets the blood plumping, still gets you really atmospheric. They've done really, really well. Just even the, the little things in the game that I loved is we were in the main hall, the dining room. Mm-hmm. Just that continuous ticking clock. Yeah. It was like, <clears throat> everything's so atmospheric. It also, like, the, it would change. It's like when you're on the carpet, it would make, like, the... That's right. Noise, then you went on the, the polished marble floor. Yeah. Like, dum, 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 dum. Then you went back to the carpet. It's a little, yeah. a little stupid thing. To well, was I the only one when the first time you ever played it? See, when it would be like, it's obviously to hide loading screens. That's exactly what it is when you go through a door. Was like expecting a zombie. A zombie. Yeah. I, was, I always held their one. Yeah. Was it a one the gun? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always held their one just to, to have that gun yeah. out for a zombie. Like, oh, nothing's there. See, I missed that. Then like, you not spent them pushing a fucking ladder that wouldn't move. Yeah. yeah. Things that I used to do, man, nothing with that game. Because I, I, I remember like play stuff and. It got to a point where you've obviously got the action button in square. Square would be your run button. Mm-hmm. You'd hold in square to push stuff, and then it, it turns out you actually really didn't even have to hold it. You just had to go up to it and push the directional button. <laughs> but it's like, see when you think back. That's where like, my thumbs click all the time because of it. You think back and you're like, oh, can I move this object? No, can I move that? You look back now and it's like, well, that's a rendered background and that bit isn't. Yep. And just push that. It's just like an old Scooby Doo cartoon. It's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, something's going to happen with that doorway because that, that looks a completely different colour for everything else in the background. Like, but what, what an idiot I was when I was. Ah, it is. Uh, early gaming, that's what I was about to say. It's like early gaming. I miss that about early gaming, knowing, knowing nothing about a game. Mm-hmm. So even like anybody, like nowadays you'd be going, oh, it's a loading screen. Why would you be expecting anything to happen? But back then I was like, oh, it's animating a door opening. What's gonna happen? Well, and I was then, like, oh. but then it was like, yeah. As soon as you went through that door, like zombies can't get me until the hunters come and they things can open fucking doors. Yeah, that's what I was gonna yeah. mention. I was like, um, don't know how because they've got huge claws. But Mark was saying <laughs> that it's the fact that if the zombie was coming at you, you were alone health, or you thought, yeah, I just need to get out here. I need to calm myself down. You'd run to the next door, just open it, and stand and go, oh cool. Got a bit of soothing music here. Take a time to compose myself, but then you get that very first cutscene with the hunter. And it's through their point of view, and That's it runs right. down. It's chasing through all me. It's, you see, it's stupid claw pulling doors open, running for you. Go, fuck! <laughs> what the what in name of God am I going to do? Does, does it hurt can him? open doors. It can, <laughs> it's just a fucking. It's just a battle toad. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like ah, oh, because you, you thank God it takes so much more ammo compared to other zombies. It's just the fact that they can kill you in one hit. Yeah, they were terrifying. They were absolutely terrifying. Chop your head off if you've got. I think you, even if you were at caution, not even danger, they could take your head off. It was yeah. absolute frightening. That was mental. Uh, <laughs> but also, when you're talking about the doors opening as well, it's, Capcom had the game out previous to this, which is a, it's almost a spiritual sequel to this. It was a kind of survival horror creepy game. And then Capcom in the game, loading screens were doors opening as well. So something home or home something I can't, I can't remember what it's called I've seen it and I meant to write yeah. it down and talk about it before we actually it's, started the podcast yeah to say this. I know what you're on about because a lot of people say it's like uh, Resident Evil's like a, spe- a spiritual successor yes to, to this game because that game that Japanese game apparently got a movie did it yeah, I, I don't know if it was based on a movie but the way people talk about it I think it's like ah they made a movie about that game it's like really I have a Resident Evil got a movie remember they were really good oh god no but the best one <laughs> no the best one's a House of the Dead oh god dude he's got a contract to something else just now oh, fucking every piece he of shit he has the contract game. to some video game I can't remember what it is please don't let it be shame you <laughs> that's that amazing is. no it's not <laughs> uh, so, so it's got that <laughs> uh, so Resident Evil 1 then Resident basically Evil. every bit I think we could wax like yeah. all about this for another half an hour and then see how great it was but this I, I think if you went back to the original right uh, and played it I don't think see anyone that didn't play it back Grown when up. it came out I don't think they would like it to be honest I think it 
the controls are very clunky. The voice acting, if you're into your cheesy, crappy movies, then you'll really get a kick out of the voice acting. As everybody knows, there's, I think there's quite a lot of memes and stuff uh, around the whole Jill fucking, language yeah, and all that nonsense. But, yeah, I, th- I think for anybody uh, that's like 20-something now... Uh, and remembers this game launching and remembers the PlayStation magazine and the demo and everything like that, it's good to go back and play it because it has aged, but it's not aged so bad you can't enjoy another game of it. Yep. No, awesome. Another, sorry, before we cut off here, I don't know if any of you know about this, but in the Sega Saturn version there is a slight difference. It's the fact when you complete the game, you get a separate game. Oh, an unlockable mode. An unlockable mode that's DLC on a disc. Damn you, Capcom, you were doing it fucking um, 20 years ago. Yeah, Capcom, by the way, DLC uh, disc locked content. Yes, <laughs> it, it, was, it wasn't half it. Was, it's not just a new thing that happened in the last Xbox 360. They had, you had to complete yeah. the game to get it. And it's battle mode. And this is like a. I think we were talking about this. It's like almost sounds a bit like a horde mode, like yeah. a survival mode. You just try and survive as long as you can. It's, sta- it's set in stages it's not just like you've got horde after horde it's like collects your top score it's um there's 12 stages and what happens is you start the game and you're in a different well I was in a different costume and uh, you start off in a save zone it's just like your standard save room it's the one downstairs we have to get the serum from mm-hmm. for the Rebecca so that that's what, that's what you, if you're Chris Redford that's <coughs> where you met Rebecca for the first time Aye. So there you start off there. That was also a cool thing with Resident Evil. You've got to change it. You've got to pick your characters. Yes. yes. And also everybody went to jail because it was easier because she started with a gun and more and two more infantry units. Yeah. Uh, whereas Chris started with a knife and two less. Because he's a bloody and bloke. More or less, Jill. I don't know why, because Chris, he had pockets in his trousers in the Saturn version. So I've seen that, Chris. You had one on each side to get we'll some get, We'll get to something. I'll just drop this a wee tiny bit here. We'll get to something in later games, but... At the very least, even though they do have that difference, it's basically easy or hard mode, mm. right? Uh, for female, male, right? You could look at it. Six. But at least Jill is kitted out. Like, mm-hmm. she looks as if she's part of that, you know, a, a squ- squad almost, right? Um, in later games, I think they kind of forgo that slightly, but that'll be something for the later games. Uh, no, no, it, Jim just says, pointed up three fingers there saying Resi 3. No, no, much later games than that. They, are, uh, they treat their female characters fucking terribly. What, uh, Resident Evil 4, trying to look up her skirt? Uh, that's not... That's, it's not even that, <coughs> honestly. It's just basically... In the later games, male characters are big, hulking, bruising men with loads of like no actual kit that you would assume somebody in that line of work would be wearing. And the female characters are wearing like lycra and it's like, where is she holding all these guns? <laughs> why does she need cleavage with that? I don't understand why she isn't wearing armour. But yeah, we'll, we'll forgo that for now. But <laughs> and I battle mode. <laughs> back to battle mode. So as I said, you start in a save room and yeah, you've got your trunk in front of you. So you push the trunk, open it up and it's got uh, lots of weapons. You've got your shotgun and different ammo rounds. You've got your bazooka. Uh, and you have first aid spray, so you've got a variety of weapons in the game. Also, your magnum and lots yeah. of ammo for the magnum, which you need, obviously. So, you start off and uh, you go through it. And again, it's the first wave is dogs, so you beat the dogs. I fucking hate dogs. Aye, and then again, you, I think you beat two zombies. Anyway, you keep doing that, and then after three or four of these stages, you go, you end up back in the save room, so you can go, right, okay, well, I've used all my ammo for my shotgun, so. Or at least I've used ammo took out with my shotgun, so I pop some of it back in and take some of it out, so you, you kind of want to balance it out. Uh, Done that again, out, kill more things, and then you end up to fighting the, the skinless zombies in one room. Also, this is cool. This is where you get to kill Zombie Wesker. Yeah. Zombie Wesker's in this game, but I know Zombie of Wesker appeared later in a different game. Aye. But Zombie Wesker is in this in the battle mode as well. I think this is the very first time you see Zombie Wesker. And he's in with the skinless zombies in stage, I think it may be stage 6 or 7. Because I think seven's the hunters. And then the one bit after that maybe is the skinless zombies. So you're in there. Um, and you see a guy with blank uniform, blonde hair, sunglasses. Johnny Bravo. <laughs> it's not Johnny Bravo, it's, it's zombie Wesker. So you get your, you get your, your magnum and pop him right in the head. So again, then you fight like uh, the hunters, and then the different hunters with the big long tongues that yeah. kill you in one hit. And after that, after eleven those stages, you go to the tyrant room. Mm. You're back in the tyrant room, and you're fighting a gold version of them. 
uh, keep one in silver, one in gold, as uh, Bender always said. So you've got a gold tyrant to fight, and he's, as Jim and Mark would say, OP'd to fuck. <laughs> They're overpowered, it's unreal. You're, you're fighting them, and I was shit myself. I, had, I took all my ammo I had, and I went, right, okay. Shot my mum, I thought, right. I got, saved a lot of my magnum, but I used a lot of that on him. Didn't even seem to flinch. I found what worked well was run to the corner, you could hear him walking, so you could, so you could, you could shot him, you could hear him getting shot, so that's fine. And um, that's one thing I hate, I didn't like about Resident Evil is your bazooka. Your bazooka shots was the fact when you fired that bazooka, if you didn't aim it perfectly at the zombie, it would arch over, arc him. over him mm-hmm. or it'd land just to the right of him, just to, whereas most other guns auto aim for you. Whereas this one, you could, it did slightly auto aim, but if you moved your character slightly either side, you missed them. See, we'll get into that later in the game I played. You can actually auto aim, you can point in the direction that it does it automatically with the other trigger. There we go. So I did play a bit of a game. Jim played 10 minutes of <laughs> You're uh, looking so smug right now. <laughs> I did play a game. I feel quite smug. <laughs> yeah, so you, you do that and you beat them, and uh, you just, it comes up like most editions of games like Capcom especially like to give you a rating so you got uh, a C rating you got did you unlock anything uh, and I kind of basically turned it off after I don't know if I started up again I'd get a Ternet costume I, I'm so assuming we we'll just like the other games that would oh, be well, I started off that one and Jill had on a, a pair of jeans by the looks of it casual casual Friday casual Friday uh, casual aye no, it's the, I mean that's kind of interesting that the, the Saturn version had that mod that's yeah, that's maybe that's what they spent 14 years programming 14 years, 14 months. 14 months. <laughs> 14 <laughs> fucking years. Oh, it's almost 14 years. <laughs> uh, I so. Definitely. It's a, it's a nice addition. And surprise addition. I was say. surprised. I, it was different because you, when you do play Resident Evil nowadays and if you complete any of the other ones, you do get separate modes in it as well after it. It's little things. I think they're now DLC for most of them. I'd rather not complete the older games. Uh, Aye. Yeah. But when you did, you got it for Resident Evil 2, you get side things and yeah, the mercenaries tofu. or tofu yeah. and you but no, clear retro started in different positions and all that. So that was that's cool. pretty cool. But yeah, so um, if anybody has any more interesting tidbits they'd like to leave, uh, just leave a comment or whatever about Resident Evil 1. But yeah, let's move on to our next game. <laughs> next game. Raise it to Take it away, Jim. It's your um, Resident Evil 2 where do I start where do I start let's start the last time I played it which was at least a good six maybe seven years ago um, I've not done any research in this game I'm off the cuff um, the first... you, obviously you played it you, you played it when you originally when it originally got released you must have played it back then yeah, yeah. of course of course well, which is what no well, six seven years ago was when I got the GameCube version yeah have you played the GameCube version? Yeah, it was a straight. That's the last time. The last time I played it was that not what, a decent port though. As oh, it was great. Like the best port of the original. Oh yeah, it felt like you were playing the original again, but it was a straight Aye. port. Yeah, that's the last time I played. Well, so, but just to give a, in case for some bizarre reason, in case anybody's listening and has never like doesn't know anything about the Resident Evil games, uh, i.e., anybody that's younger than twenty somethings. Uh, this came out two years after the original game, and it came out for the PlayStation. But it eventually, get ported because it was so. Like, Resident Evil was really kicking off at this point, and it's starting to get ported here, there, and everywhere. Like N sixty four, Dreamcast, um, PC, fucking. Uh, I think it even got a Game dot com <laughs> thing. Do you remember them? No, no. Uh, it was, it was, like was that the red thing? screen. Yeah, it, it was uh, basically terrible. But um, it was this. It started. Resident Evil was really blown up at this point. And Resident Evil 2, uh, I think everybody owned this. When I was younger, I remember everyone owning this. Well, it was like, the, my first memory of it was, yet again, as we said in Resident Evil 1, official PlayStation magazine came out, and it was Resident Evil 2, but this time, it's like, you got it. it was, do you remember you used to get the um, singles, charts singles, and it used to come in a really thin... CD cover, yeah. yeah. Remember, it's like the like a, that's right. A, yeah. an if album, you breathed on it, an album would be like that, but an inch thick. 
but the single uh, did half an inch thick. Going into John Menzies again, another mess for John Menzies. We're bringing that uh, back. Actually, Woodworths, I got this from. Oh, I went Woodworths. into John Menzies, like, yeah, can I have uh, that uh, Puff Daddy single? Come with me. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's uh, my two ninety nine. <laughs> that was my first ever single purchase. How fucking embarrassing is that? <laughs> oh, that's what it's so it's like, on the magazine, it's like, you it's... must have been about 12 at the time. <laughs> Puff Daddy was cool. <laughs> so it's like, uh, and it wasn't, it's like, nowadays it's like a little bit of adhesive. This mm-hmm. was like a, f- a full roll of sellotape on your magazine, so like you're trying to take it off carefully, so you wouldn't, oh, ri- no. so you wouldn't ri- yeah. rip the front cover. No, uh, my front cover Absolutely. was halfed. It was halfed, yeah. and I ended up just giving up and just ripping the thing out. Yeah. I, yeah, I, cra- yeah. I cracked the CD, the, the single <sighs> case, and uh, so I opened it, I was like, put it in, it's like playable demo. I was like, well, okay, we can see what we get. So I played it, and it's like, as soon as you turn it on, PlayStation, whatnot, then it came up in the middle of the screen. 10 minutes I'm like what does that mean oh so, so it's like so, so it's like, run through run through then it's like a countdown I'm like, well, something's going to happen after this 10 minutes so you've done your bits you've done your boss watch cutscenes then gradually as it does counts down then it goes zero 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 uh, I can't but I cannot remember for the life of me what it said after 10 minutes but thank, thank you for playing or just something. got off Aye. doesn't matter so if you could but do you could say like Resident Evil 2 coming fall. coming soon or yeah or like winter or spring so I was like, was like yeah a time demo really it was like cool I'm going to play that again and I yeah. must have hounded the thing for did it did you try and get as far as possible well in it? what the beginning no you, at the beginning you were just shooting zombies and yeah. you got the <gasps> hold on what is this and the guy with the shotgun holding yeah. it at you with the sweatbands no, with the blood what, on it what he does he, you bust in right and he's, after he's the about to blow your head after off. After loan time, remember? Yeah. After loan time. Bust in. You've seen you open that door off. really slowly. <laughs> I know. That's the <laughs> weird thing is, you are actually going in really slowly. But, and then he's like, oh, yeah, uh, this place is pretty safe or something. <laughs> Just the, as he finishes saying that. No, as he, wa- he walks towards you as if to say, all right, you're all right, Leon, we'll, we'll sort this out. Walks to the window. Glass smashes, the guy comes through and he yeah. is mauled by three zombies. And so what, all you do is run and collect ammo. Yeah, so, so what do I do? <laughs> do I save him or do I collect the ammo behind the, uh, the counter? Behind the counter? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll just take 15 handgun bullets, another 15 handgun bullets, and do I shoot there the zombies but with your yeah, handgun? Or you just quickly turn around and go, Resi 1, they couldn't come through the door... I'm going to chance it again just run out the door yeah. it's fine could so, you not get a shotgun though yeah you could get yeah. a shotgun if you wasted 15 of those bullets you picked up you've got 30 now yeah. plus the 15 that was already in the clip it's a risk you do the math you do the math 15 minus 15 is 0 <laughs> <laughs> so it was like that and I was like okay it's like, so you do what you do and you, yeah, you obviously in the demo you would be able to like time wise you're well into the police station you would have got to the police you got station. the police station so it's like you're doing it's like the cinematic thing it's like the it comes from the top and uh-huh. it goes all the way down it's like you see it's a woman holding like a water basin or yeah, something yeah a statue it's, in the middle of this police station what a bizarre police station yeah it almost really? looked like uh, yeah again it's one station. of those things it was like I think there was a map in it like as in Resident Evil 1 there, there was, was a map. something in it yeah. it may have been more or less the same statue as in Resident Evil 1 when you got through that first blue door and it's like the women's with the basin it may be the same statue as in Resident Evil 2 think in about my it. mind it, it, is, it sounds similar it's probably completely different there's probably somebody listening going Fucking, it couldn't be any more. It's like a statue of Hulk Hogan or something there, and we're like, it's a woman with a basin. I'm sure it's. And he still wouldn't put you over. <laughs> so anyway, Hogan sandbagged the zombies. After that nonsense, is like you go through the door and it's like, oh, it looks like a party here, and then it's like, welcome Leon. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, it's Leon's first day because he's already explained that to Chrissy's sister in the car. Yeah. So it's like you're in there and you go up around and you just see a pixelated Will Smith. <laughs> you just have a little chat to him. It's like, are you getting jiggy with it, Will? He's like, na 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 na. Oh, oh, hey. fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> he does know what he talks. No. <laughs> 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 but he talks nonsense to me and it's like, yeah, you need this and it gives you a key card to get into the next room. Yeah, and then it's like from there on, it just slowly yeah, progresses. No, he tells you that your party's not happening. He does, Remember? doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. <But> Sorry, <laughs> I can't get down with this. Yes. Yeah, well, you're right. We can't get down with this. Then from there on, it's a hazy memory because I should have done my homework. Um, well, well, after that, you know, I mean, the, just, that, the story yeah. goes on and on. In the police station, I remember the first the first time you come across a liquor. 
Oh, um, so that CGI. is a good point. Is that you go through it? It's like the the windows are boarded up, yeah, and it's like the occasional you hear noises and you think zombies are going to come through it. Mm-hmm. They end up, they do eventually, eventually come through it. They see the the scene starts and all you hear is like you no, know, it's, Click. it's small but clicking, and then it then eventually you kind of you're looking ahead and you can't see anything, and then you hear it's like blood dripping, and then you the camera slowly pans up and you realise there's this fucking weird animal thing with its brain exposed uh, yeah, yeah. exposed yeah and, and then it's a big tongue, tongue and massive claws on the ceiling yeah and it's just blood slowly dripping from it and then obviously uh, the CGI ends and you're suddenly back in the game you're absolutely shiting yourself yeah but you've got those 15 clips you got off that dead <laughs> man's counter so you can smash right <laughs> into the Santa and liquor although pro tip uh, Resident Evil just run by everything Pretty if much. you can, you, you can pretty much I run by most things. I don't care what people say. I've tried that a thousand times. I remember back in the days like, when you got, before game FAQs, mm-hmm. it was you used to get walkthroughs on a little manual in your magazines. Yeah. So it's a little red, stuff. little red book. <laughs> so you'd read it, it's like, don't waste ammo, let it chew your foot and stamp on its head. Like, good idea. Chew it. No, oh, you're dead. Because right. I, I didn't dodge ten of those zombies you told me to dodge. Uh, yeah. dodge. Like, Aye, nice I was all about, see, once you figure it out, uh, I, I know I said in the first game, I, I treated it like an action game almost. I was like, oh, bad guy there, I must kill the bad guy. But it's all about conservation. And again, Resident Evil 2 is pretty much the exact same. If you can, just run by zombies, run by zombies, because you need to conserve as much ammo as you can. But the good thing about Resident Evil was, um, sorry, Resident Evil 2, I should say, is that see later on when Leon gets injured, mm-hmm. how does he get injured? I can't think off the top of my head. So I, I can see him with the picture of his bandage, he's, he's bandage that's over his shoulder and, and, and his around his wrist. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, I was like, you know what? That is so cool because I'd never seen that before. Ah, well, true. Yeah, you're, that your actual action hero is sustaining injury yeah. through well, the game. Also, you get injured when you would hold your, you'd just been beat up by a, your neck, get bit by a zombie, so you decided to hold your arm and limp. That's right. I guess that would have been quite... I mean, all that is what small things that once again gets you involved in the game. You might not consciously think of it, but subconsciously it might affect you. Because I don't know why I always think back of Leon as being one of the best characters. He's a boss. And... Oh, dog's making an appearance. Uh, Leon is kind of one of the better characters in the game, purely down to... Uh, I think he just kicks ass. Doesn't really say a lot, does he? Plus, takes ass and takes names, as I say. Really? No, he does. I, I love Leon. One of my definite favourite characters in a franchise. Full stop. Yeah, but I, as I say, like, I really did like Leon, so, but, but I never, I'm not going to lie, I never touched this too. I know, I was kind of the same. When I think Resident Evil 2, although I like Claire Redfield, because one of my favourites is Code Veronica, and she's the main character, but... It's weird when I think Resi 2, I always think of Leon, Leon. S. Kennedy. Yeah, <laughs> it is weird. Maybe it's me being sexist, but the weird thing is when I think of Resi 1, I think of Jill Valentine. Yeah. I don't think of Chris I don't Redfield. think of Chris either. No, 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 no. I don't so either. I don't think there is any sort of like sexist thing going on there. It's just purely. I think you kind of choose your character. Well, let's think be honest. The, main character. the very first time you usually put a game in, you stick in disc one. Yeah. You don't think. Well, you play a game, you go through. Oh, Many of us back in the day, I don't know if I'm speaking for just me and Hetero here, but pretty much pirated games on the old <laughs> PS1. Oh, let's cut this right well, out. <laughs> I obviously now own the originals. Obviously, oh, we course, don't do something. anything like that. I, well, no. well, I just said it's like I played it on GameCube as well, so I also have it on the PlayStation 1 and GameCube. So don't uh, kill me. So you used to get that, you'd get Disc 1, and you'd, the first thing you do is stick in Disc 1, play it, and turns out it's Leon's. Mm-hmm. Mission rather than Claire's. I did play through Claire's because I liked Claire's yeah, because special missions better than her special, but her, her second playthrough was always better. I felt yeah. we started it differently, but when you could do separate things. I mean, it, that's more. the very, very cool thing. We should say the, the cool thing about Resi 2 is there is like different gameplay paths to the game. Yep. So if you select Claire, you, you have a slightly different game. And the weird thing is, if you play through it, say you play through it the first time as Leon, Certain things you do or certain things you don't pick up in the game, if you play it through as Claire, that will be there. It's it's a weird thing. Certain certain times of the game, uh, and that I thought again very very cool. Like I mean, Resi One, 
you pretty much character select as Chris or Jill. Yeah, it was all two it, separate yeah, games, it's sort of thing, yeah. All it done was, it's like, it's kind of easy or hard, right? Mm-hmm. But you play through pretty much the same game. Yeah, almost. well, it was the same end boss, it was the same yeah. first zombie, it was the same. Whereas there's a lot more, there is definitely a lot more Apart differences. Apart from Resident 1, do you remember the guy popped himself in the head? Yeah. Was it, could you get that on both things? I've never seen that with Jill Valentine. I was, was going to say, was Jill not Barry down in the catacombs? Yeah. Barry turned the around thing, and said, I'm is, doing it for my family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There, is, there is differences in Resi 1, but not as big. There's a lot more... Um, in 2. Yeah, in 2. They, they, they definitely developed on that more. Oh, but that's the thing, though. Whereas in Resident Evil 1, their past never crossed until the yeah. end. You've seen the end sequence, basically, of Chris and Jill sitting together and going, all right, okay. Whereas in Resident Evil 2... Leon and Claire cross paths at the beginning and mm-hmm. all all the way through the game as well. Aye. Aye, so what they kinda every so often have a wee wave. <laughs> you know what? Claire, how you doing? Zombie still kicking about? Yep. Yep. Brilliant. Oh, do you like my new bandage? Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> also, before we go on, uh customization of weapons. You could get add ons. That's right, yes. You could get the add on for the handgun, which made it automatic. Mm-hmm. You could get the extension for the shotgun. I can't remember off the yeah. top of my I think it gave you more ammo. More uh, more yeah. ammo, and there was something. The, the magnum, magnum. You put you the add on. You get an extension for the magnum. To make it more powerful, which you could, if you basically. Just gave you a shoulder, it gave you a, a butt for the magnum, so you could fire That's it. That's right, yeah. But the thing was with the magnum as well, if you forgot to pick that, because you could forget things in the game, so if yeah. you, as you just said, if you miss the magnum, it's nigh on impossible to beat No, you couldn't boss. beat it, because it was that thing, that, uh, remember the spinning thing, it was like a, it was like a train, remember at Thomas the Tank Engine, when they, uh, the trains used to get spun round in the yard, mm-hmm. so they could face where they wanted to go, that was the thing, you had to go down, it was like an elevator, like in Streets of Rage. It was like all these bad people used to jump on yeah. and you had to beat them up. But that's the thing. The guy was stabbing through that. That's mm. right. What was it? It wasn't a trident, was it? No, it was the guy with the eyeball on his shoulder slash arm. Who was that? I don't know. But was that us? Because remember, you yeah, that daughter. was somebody from like, like you knew them or something. Yeah. Was it Will Smith? Oh, we... Is that him trying to get his family <laughs> on this game already? Yeah. Jaden Smith. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, ah, uh, oh, yeah, we really probably should have quickly replayed well, what this. we thought was I know Jim was going to play through it and actually be able to fill us in but we, we kind of we obviously went ahead with it because we, all of us have played it because we all just have massively really great memories of playing this game it was I, really really I think it's yeah. more, one of the games along with Metal Gear I think I completed I can't even remember how many times I completed that game now God knows how many times I've finished it. Amount. But that, that brings me to the like, saying the completion. Every time you completed it, pretty much you unlocked like, a game mode or outfits or uh, more weapons. This Resi 2 really, really kicked up the whole like unlockables for the Resi yep. series. And I think it might be the only game I actually used an action replay for. Um, uh, that wise, like you could start the game with extra all the special guns and costumes, whereas game chains all that stuff in the past I never ever used I didn't see the point of them whereas this game I went my mate had one I thought oh I need that to actually try out some of these things like I want to start the game with the Magnum I want to see what yeah. Chrissy's not sorry uh, Leon's alternate costumes are I want to see what Claire does yeah. you can well, start the game with an electrified gun because it gives you a ranking see then jumping straight to the end uh, it gives you a ranking at the end of the game and it tells you exactly what you've unlocked and it was the ve- I think it's the very first game that I ever completed and right away Restarted and started playing through it again. Unless you were tofu, because I could oh, not, no. I could not finish that game yeah. with tofu. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, you unlock. Eventually, you do. You unlock what like, mercenaries and stuff. So you play as the the mercenary squad that uh, members of them that you see at the beginning of the game getting killed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's like a wee kind of a wee missions where you, ha- you get timed and you have to go through. Uh, kill zombies and get through to the other end kind of thing. Just a wee unlockable mode, kind of cool. Uh, but eventually you can unlock it's a piece of tofu which is a just a grey slab essentially with no limbs just tiny tiny weed it's almost like dots from limbs holding a knife yep and it's I think it's wearing a bandana did he have any slots? I think all you had was a knife That was. I think it was a knife yeah I think you could so maybe could get you, a key card or something like that how could you put like the key cards in the well, I mean, Game I think when you get to that so. point, it's, it's now the game kind of thing. Oh, no, yeah, I never passed that. Yeah, I never passed that. I'm sure 
I'm sure there is videos out there. People maybe like I'm wrong, but, it. but was was tofu actually only available in the mercenaries mode? I don't think it was actually yeah. available in the gameplay. It's, mode. it's only in the mercenaries mode. So, that you, I you, you, so you're thinking, you think, oh, how yeah, can yeah. I complete Resident Evil Two with just a knife? No, mm-hmm. I think it was just the mercenary mode. Oh, you yeah. tofu and with. I think I remember reading somewhere something about the tofu was actually just a wee quick build thing. It was used to test. Yeah, that's right. Certain things thought, in the oh, game. We'll stick them in. Yeah, and they just went like, you know what? We we'll just put them as an unlockable character. I do. I do remember when you paused the game obviously you went to your inventory you got a picture of yourself it says like Claire Redfield or whatever or Leon or the mercenary's name if you do the tofu you get a cool little picture of tofu it's yes. his, his little kind I'm of, sure he wore a bandana I I'm think sure. he did as well um, you got, did get a little kind of action shot of tofu going yeah cool tofu is yeah. badass when you think as soon as you just say bandana I just think a snake yeah I want red, uh, Metal Gear Solid is that yeah, yeah. 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 Ammo. Thing, yeah. you use your yeah. yes but no, uh, Resi 2, that's, um, I think it's the game I've completed the most. Uh, and oh, because you could, you could polish it off. It's like, last time I played it, it's like, I was like, okay, I'm going to have a, I'll have a walkthrough sitting on my, what was it, um, maybe a Kindle or something. Because I was looking at it, it's like, oh, what did I do here? And I was like, you know what, it's just, mus- it's not muscle memory, but it's just you yeah. remember. It's like, okay, I'll do this. Talk to Will Smith, like, Jaden, get out of the way. Leon's party's ruined you have to start your rubbish yep. and just go on with it and, then, and it's like it's just it's crazy how much it's like you don't think about how much you played it until you play it again it's like shit I remember yeah. so much of this nonsense I'm actually going to go out and I'm probably really 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 wrong here but see do you remember when you, you speak I'm not going to call him Will Smith he looked like Will Smith <laughs> when you speak to the dude right in uh, one of the, the rooms nearby or something you go around and there's a wee uh, box well it's a wee um, cabinet that you need to unlock and it's got a wee code a security code I think I remember the security code and I think it's 4010 <laughs> is it wrong? <laughs> I don't know I just if it's wrong I don't it might be wrong it probably is wrong I'm thinking of uh, another game and what was inside the cabinet? a key or something it was a, a key card Probably. I'm I'm pretty sure it's but you could probably see if you into the locker room. What yeah. I remember if you knew that you could get that early. Yeah. One thing I did think was cool about the game though that wasn't in other games, obviously you just fought normal zombies, stuff like that. I've never seen a game where you fought as like the zombie was in fire and all that the, yeah. the environments oh, yeah, like yeah. if you were if they put that into the fire they would actually come out the fire they'd still be on flames. It was kinda of things oh, like that. Christ I can't believe it took so long to actually get to it. The fact is uh, the first game's called Resident Evil, which is very applicable because, mm. you know, it's in a house. In a house, yeah. Uh, second game, it doesn't become because second game just ups the ante and everything, i.e. it's a city, you know, mm-hmm. now. And, and I remember playing it and going and, and thinking that. It's like, oh, it's like in my mind, it's open world. I mean, it's not <laughs> at all. But in my mind, I'm like, Jesus, I'm playing, I'm in the city when everything is going to pot. And it. it that is, that's, uh, the name starts to, I didn't think of it back then, but it's only now that you really look back and go, like, probably shouldn't, they actually probably should have just stuck with Biohazard, Biohazard. Yeah. which is the Japanese title and is actually a better name, but no, Resident Evil 2 is, it's just like, Resident Evil 2 feels like, Resident Evil 1 was the indie game, Resident Evil 2 was like the, you know what, fucking blockbuster, yeah. that, to me personally, I know a lot of people probably won't see it that way but to me personally it's like that was just, the Resi 1 was a kind of newcomer probably nobody expected it to be as big as it did and then Resi 2 was just kind of like let's just blow this out the water expand everything yeah let's that's just do everything that's the thing though it's like Resident Evil 2 it's not perfect but no not at I'd all I'd say it was at least my favourite game on uh, Playstation 1 and that's yeah. including Final Fantasy 7 what I have a lot of motherfucking time for but I'll put uh, Resident Evil 2 before it yeah yep and that's seen a lot that's seen a hell of a lot it really is actually but uh, it's my most played game I know I've put a lot more hours into that game than I have any other Resident Evil game uh, which is weird because it's probably not my favourite as in the, my what, what I think is the best but yeah nostalgia wise it's just only good memories of the game that I've got. No, I, I really can't think of a bad thing to say about Resident Evil 2. Well, I really can. Obviously, like you could go back and gameplay mechanics. If anybody, 
what, what, like it. we said with Resi 1, if anybody was to go back and play it and had never played them, they'd be going, this game's shite. Like, no, as in the well, I just think of it as buttery smooth. <laughs> I really do. It's like the last time I played it, which was recently for this podcast. But um, yeah, last time I played it, buttery smooth, honestly. It's, it is a lot tighter than the first. A lot tighter. Yeah. You can actually run and curve your run instead yeah. of run it. They do actually do. And they smash do. it into a wall. Yeah, they do tighten up the controls. Yeah, slightly, slightly. But it's a lot better than Resident Evil One. Plus the the actual cutscenes. They now forgo the the real FMVs, actors, Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they're now using like obviously just like uh, for CGI. The yeah. yeah. For the time, I remember the cutscenes looking amazing. Of course, it's like, like, honestly, it's like see watching that first cutscene where it's like you're in a police car, mm-hmm. and you're you're driving it. It's like, what is this idiot doing? And the next thing you know, a oh, zombie just smashes things up. Yep. You remember how did it start? It was like a trucker. Uh, it was Smash in a truck him, stop. Yeah. yeah. It was in hey. a truck stop, and it's like he beat me. What an idiot! <laughs> the next thing you know, this trucker just smashes into your car. Mm-hmm. Then it's like, next thing you know, there's a zombie in the back of your car. I don't know how he gets into the back of your car. I'm sure that happens. Oh god, it's, it's been so I long know. since I actually watched any entry. I'm, I, I just swear I to remember god, that's what happens. One of the zombies lunges at you, or one of the cutscenes that shows you the zombie lunging at you, and it's got like that nineties floppy hair. Mm-hmm. Like see the, the middle pattern. Like, 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 Leon's hair, like, like Leon's hair. Uh, I've got that vividly stuck in my memory for some reason. I'm honest. I'm sure that's why Leon crashes. Because he swerves. Because the zombie attacks. Well, I know once behind. he crashed, it's like he gets out. Obviously, his, the driver's side, and, and then Claire gets out of her passenger side, and, and it's like, spot. oh, we're separated by one, what, one fire one motor, truck. one <laughs> pixel <laughs> of fire. I know. Catch it. Exactly. It's like okay, we may as well go our separate ways. <laughs> what? And, and it made a fantastic game. Yeah, it did. Honestly, Resi 2 Nothing but good memories about Resident Evil 2. Brilliant game. Would play it again. But Resi 2, we may as well add in the wee trivia tidbits here at the end. It's Resi 2 almost was a slightly different game, purely down to um what was it, the director? Oh, I can't think of his name. I, I I think I was about to say Kojima, but I think that's, that's uh, here Kojima's fucking uh, yeah, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, <laughs> aye, that guy. <laughs> So the, the obviously the main resi dude he came he came kind of back into it and they scrapped the what their original ideas and there was supposed to be a different character it was no Claire Redfield it was Elsa Walker I think. Elsa, who was a biker that, that's what obviously where the idea for Claire still comes in because she rides a motorcycle and Chris loves motorcycles that's right yep uh, but I think it was definitely a good idea that they did do that because it, it does create a, like it gives a reason for Claire to be there yes yeah. like she's looking for her brother. So all automatically you're kind of going, okay, this guy. It's not just someone else stuck in a zombie apocalypse. Exactly. So, um, yeah, so it could have been a slightly different game, apparently. But, yeah, awesome. I think every everyone agrees. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 12 <laughs> out of 10. 11. Oh. Just make 10 louder. Yeah, just, just make it louder. Cool. I'm recording this a few days removed from that last sentence you would have heard from Resident Evil 2 review. Uh, well, I say review, it's more so us just struggling to remember Resident Evil 2. Uh, what happened was, we were supposed to get at the very least 1, 2 and 3 covered that night, but we ended up drinking a little bit too much. But uh, yes, luckily, luckily, me and Bob, so Bob and I, we had already recorded earlier in the week uh, some uh, of the kind of wee extra spin-off games. So what you're going to hear now is just Bob and I talking about those games. Cheers. One of my first games that I actually sat through and played was a game that I kind of wondered about going, nah. always did want to play it because at the time Game Boy, it's for the Game Boy Colour. I was like, oh, I always wanted to pick it up and it's uh, Resident Evil Gaiden or Gaiden, whatever you want to pronounce it. Gaiden. Gaiden. <laughs> for the Game Boy Colour. Um, it's its own story. It's not a remake. It's its own standalone and um, the front cover box art always seen portrayed either a life boy, lifesaver circle. Oh right, yeah. Or Leon, because obviously it was tying in with Resident Evil Two. It was around about the same time. Oh, you can play as Leon. 
to everything you're telling me is pretty much brand new to is me. It? I I knew of the game. Mm-hmm. I know nothing about it. I knew of it again, and I'd seen some screenshots, and I thought it doesn't really look like a Resident Evil game because it's top down. Really? It's a, it's a kind of weird top down view, though. It's not proper top down. It's almost to like a uh, maybe not one hundred Zelda d- Zelda angle. Yeah, almost, and it's um, you can see it, but ah, oh, it's, it's it's not a good game. So um, it starts off ten out of ten. <laughs> ten, ten out of ten. It's uh, it's better than Resident Evil Five. <laughs> Uh, just the, the game starts and it's ridiculous and it starts off with a really stupid looking zombie as the like the, the game screen it's a horrible looking zombie it's like I don't know if it's meant to be scary and well, maybe uh, it's just preparing you for the mess to come it could be and uh, the game that, start, well, this was our best effort at a zombie check the nick of this this is the best we can do for this f- platform yeah. I, I doubt it because if you better. want to find out more, press start now. Yeah, <laughs> push one of the other two buttons on the console, which is A or B. So you do that, start up the game, and you're greeted by a a nice brown figure, and you think, "Oh, who the fuck's that? Is that Chris?" It's quite strange. So you play through it, and um, but it, again, you're still going. Oh, it might be Leon because he's on the box. I don't know. So then you kind of get a Metal Gear Solid style thing where you get the the two faces. Speaking to each other, yeah, yeah, speak to like each other through a headset. So you're talking, and uh, turns out that you're Barry. Barry Button? You're yeah, Barry Button. Barry Button gets his own game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's Barry, <laughs> or he's a. Uh, Does he just spend the whole game saving other people from stuff? <laughs> he goes, Ah, oh, I'm sorry I double crossed you. Uh, but Barry, fuck off. Here's a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can have a gel sandwich. Um, and then the guy says, Oh, you check the PDA, because it's, oh, it's the 90s. Bet. So you've, you've got a PDA, and it says, Tells you what to do on your PDA, Barry. Get on with it. So you can only select him. So you go through, um, and then you, Barry going, "Well, what what the hell's happened here?" You going, Barry? You should know. You just came from Resident Evil One. Oh, has he done? Is it doing that thing? It's like surprised at zombies, yeah. even though he's fought through zombies. Yep, yeah, he's fought through a, a sea of zombies in Resident Evil One in the mansion. Are you going? Is this a prequel? I haven't actually looked up to see if it is a prequel because the game hurt it, d- it doesn't make sense either way though no, because even it if doesn't. it is because obviously in Resident Evil 1 he's surprised at the same what is it? yeah yeah, you've got all that but then you're going well why does he never mention Leon as another <laughs> member way, of the stars yeah. um, I say there's cut screens in the game because you could eat by another cut screen but it's as much as a cut screen as you can get on a Game Boy I can't imagine what that is I just a moving to, static picture. You'll, you'll need to see it. It's terrible. Basically, it's like it gives you a picture with some text underneath it. It slightly moves a little bit, and then some more text. So you walk through the door, and it's your first time you see a zombie. And every single time you fight a zombie, it plays the same noise. It's like there's a zombie screech, but because it's coming through a Game Boy, which is oh, it's it's terrible. It's really really bad. So obviously. You, you have the zombie groan in every other yeah. Resident Evil game. You, you're accustomed to the groan. It's a high pitched screech coming through the Game Boy speaker. Oh god! And it's, it's it's terrible. So it goes into a first person view. You're looking through Barry Burton's eyes. Right. And there's a zombie coming at you. Sometimes there's two. And it's um, I don't know if you remember like old school golf games. You have to push the button. Right, and then push it again to yeah, so get it in the middle. Or so something. you've got a, a ticker bar at the bottom, yeah. and there's a, like basically oh, a, a right. hit bar, and you need to click it precisely on that bit. If you miss it, you miss the zombie. So you've got it clicking along the screen, so you need to push the button correctly so you can hit that zombie. So you need to do that, and it goes quite fast, and you're like, fucking hell. So you, that's how you need to hit it right in the middle to deal some damage to the, the zombie. So you do that, and it's pretty annoying, because it's... It's fast and it's on a tiny screen, so what the fuck yeah. are you meant to do? It's, it's hard to see. So you do that, and uh, after you beat the first zombie in the game, you're greeted with another cut screen, and it's uh, a girl called Lucia who. who can. Some, you find out later in the game that she can feel the presence of the bad people, and it's called Bo, you, you find out in other games. B O W. It stands for something, but I'm just going to call it a Bo. B- I think I'm actually called BOW. Sounds better. What, what is this BOW? It's it's like the T virus. Oh, so, the, so it's the, not T virus. No, it's something it's else. BOW, but the, it just pronounced it BOW all the way through it. 
it doesn't have dots in between it's just capital B capital O capital W yeah. Bo so you're like right okay that's, that's daft so she tells you they've got this power that she can sense when they're close to her it's really really stupidly strange so you're playing it and uh, you go you, yeah you find the next thing you find another gun and you're like okay but it's strange for Resident Evil though because you have an infinite infantry in oh, really? yeah you can like carry as much as you want because you need to go about picking up shit keys and there's just so much you don't need in this game that's unreal it's, it's like real. it doesn't do the usual like you, know, you don't know you don't need this anymore no no which no. even when I was younger I was like how does he know I, how does he know how do you know you don't need it because you've only been to that one part of the mansion and you've only seen two doors with an armour on it you go I don't need this armour key anymore we disregard it oh. I might as well just fucking chuck it in the bin aye um, so again you just go through the game and uh, then you meet Leon who's fallen down a hole and you think like, oh, <laughs> help me Baz man. Barry you going to help me with this son so anyway Barry has you have to go find him he's in the engine room so you have to basically the game is one massive go here fight a zombie but you can avoid the zombies by running around them but as soon as the zombie touches you it does or you go anywhere properly near it it does that high pitched screech and you need to go the first person view so how does the zombie obviously I'm assuming the zombie deals damage by getting close to you and chomping you Aye, it's like, but does it like chomp you step back you get a shot it comes it, it's moving towards you on the screen right. and when it gets too close the screen kind of flashes red like as if to say it's like the old uh, Time Crisis games yeah like when you're in that one view and your screen will flash and say you've been dealt damage and you see your life at the bottom you're like, okay, that's, that's how I'm going to die. So, you need to go down and you find Leon again. And it's like, oh, you need to help me because I've got green blood. No, that's what you find out. You find out the bow has green blood. That's how you tell So, people, people infected have green blood? Have green blood, whereas normal people like yourself and Lucia uh, all have. No, Lucia has green blood as well, so she's got green blood to begin with. So, that's how she can tell there's an enemy nearby. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> the storyline is so. To be honest, the storyline in re- most Resident Evil games are yeah. pretty ridiculous. They're pretty bad, so you have to go find Leon. He's hiding in the engine room. You run around. There's a cut screen. Barry's on the on his radio. Barry's like, oh, "Yeah, I'm on the radio. I found the girl. I've got Leon." And you're like, "Wait a minute, what's happening here? Is Barry double crossing us again?" Oh my god! Is Barry fucking us about? So the time it's like you see the and then out of nowhere a submarine appears. Right, right, there's a with Barry's face on it. <laughs> the lead of extraordinary gentlemen. <laughs> Barry Burton summary. You're like, what the fuck is this? It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know if you can hear that noise, but again, I've went old school. Ah, unlike, unlike Mark, who <laughs> has my laptop. who again has a laptop full of notes. I like the old uh, pen and paper method, and I thought, like, yeah, you know what the ironic thing about all that is. I'm the one who's basically skint and works like shitty jobs. <laughs> You're the one who's getting money, and I'm the one that's like, hey, yeah, I'll just bring my laptop and uh, mic. Uh. No, I'm like, no, nah, I've got a pen and a Biro. <laughs> that's why he has money, ladies and gentlemen. All of it goes to fucking games consoles. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yep. So anyway, anyway, you know, he's fucking, he's double crossed me, and uh, Leon goes, "Oh, Barry, what are you doing? Why are you being such a nugget? Talking about this?" So Barry pulls out his gun and goes, fuck off you, Lucia, come with me, we're getting on this submarine. Like, hey, okay, so he jumps in the submarine, and you look at the submarine, it's got a fucking Umbrella logo on it, isn't it? <gasps> You're like, oh no, here we go, Barry is on the side of Umbrella, not for the first time. I already said this. So confusing. Yeah, so you're like, oh Jesus Christ, what's happening? And then there's two enemy that kind of look like the mercenaries, yeah. stand on top of it, and Leon goes, I know what I'm going to do here. They've got submachine guns, but I've got a pistol. Fires a couple of shots at them, and then you see the, the submarine submerge. And go, well, did they just drown those two guys that were standing on top of it a minute ago? Ah, you don't see them go back in. So they've obviously just, they've just drowned. And uh, there's another explosion on the boat, and it says, so HQ tell you, oh, you need to go to the engine room. Again? Back to the engine room, and I think you go to the engine room four or five times. It's only they put a lot of effort into designing that engine room. Yep. <laughs> They're going to make the most out of it. So I was like, oh, fucking hell. Uh, you need to go down again, and you need to end up fighting the bow, like the guy you think's yeah. the, main, the main boss. So you, you fight him. Who uh, he's not called Wesker, but he's called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. It's like, oh, what are you going to do? Shoot me. <laughs> so you, you have to fight him, and. Uh, 
yeah, yeah, it's terrible. It's, it's the combat's so bad. It's so clunky. You just and the music and it's so fucking repetitive. You just wish you could turn off that music. How would how would you go about doing a Resi game on a Game Boy Color though? Really, you I would know. have to do it almost like Zelda, but a top. I know yeah. you're saying it's top down, but then when it gets to the action, it does well, obviously what well, first person mm-hmm. do. I just don't know what you would do, apart from just not do it. I don't think they knew either. No, I to me it kind of. I don't, I've, obviously I've never played it but just hearing about it and just the idea of a Resident Evil game on the, right. on something as limited as the Game Boy you would have to do it some sort of weird spin off i.e. it's in the Resident Evil universe but it's a totally different game yeah it, but then you're going to have people going That's what what part of the timeline is it what is this what's that you're bringing new characters and people go fuck that this fucking storyline unless I am completely mental this, the storyline just doesn't work nah. it's it's so convoluted like if you were really to take in from Resident Evil 1 right through to Resident Evil 6 mm. but it was bad enough playing through Resident Evil 6 which I will get to Resident Evil 6 was a fucking mess but by the sounds of things this even this wasn't as big a mess as that storyline but no. it's Barry Burton when, when does that's what's confused me when does this take place because Barry Burton does the exact same thing again yeah. except I, this time he jumps in it's more, a, it's more like, like oh Jesus what, what the hell's happening here so <laughs> you go down you beat that bow guy and you go right okay what do I do now and then out of nowhere it cuts back to the submarine yeah so you're cut back to the submarine and you see Barry with the sea and the captain the evil captain <laughs> and all that hand over the lass and Aye. Barry's like that no double cross bitch Barry double crosses him <laughs> oh, oh, it's, the, it's the classic fucking switcheroo and he goes nah I'm working for fucking stars this time get it round you can see the whole time I was sitting going Barry's a fucking no why would Barry do this again anyway so he turns around and goes no reason why he did this was to hijack the submarine and you're like right okay so what are you going to do now you're on a submarine where everyone's against you Barry yeah and then like hand over the last it's like nah I'd rather kill the last and give it to you more or less so yeah so like, fair goal let's go ahead and say nah let's do it but then the bow comes out again and attacks the captain right so then he's turned into a zombie the captain is a zombie so uh-huh. then you're going well she was attacked the girl who you're with was attacked by the bow so why is she not a zombie she's special Aye. anyway so she must have only got a, a, a tiny bite with this guy got a full on jump <laughs> Yeah, like, right, okay. It's ridiculous. So you need to fight the captain. It's, it's terrible. Is this the boss? The captain? No, the captain's just another part. He's another boss. Right. There's no, there's no, it's like boss fights. They have t- maybe a little bit more health. Yeah. The, the ticket at the bottom goes slightly quicker. It's not like in Resident Evil you have to run away from the boss and you have to find it at a strategic point where if you stand here you can hit him there. Aye. he chases you there's nothing like that because it's just the same action throughout it's the, the whole same thing. action so it's yeah. just, they've just changed the sprites rather than the boss and the zombie the zombie has a hat or a beard yeah. and it's like right, okay let's, let's, let's batter him and then uh, you need to, you need to come out and you go back what is it I don't know, I'll have to read my notes here because I can't remember what actually happens this <laughs> bullshit happens I would imagine it's, it's really really shit I'm just I probably should have read, up, read over these anyway beforehand but I just remember going this is fucking crap uh, oh yeah this is what happens yeah you go back to you go back to Leon he's locked in the room with the proper real bow the bad guy the proper baddie and you're like right okay you need to fight him again so you switch now to Leon you're, you're back to Leon, Leon after you right. find out that Barry is not double crossing you he's double crossing Umbrella who he double crossed with the first time but oh. yeah so like Barry just go for yourself <laughs> and then uh, he rescues well, it's, aye, so you fight that him you beat him again and then it cuts back to Barry and he's like to the wee lassie where's your family he's like I don't have a family he's like do you know what see if we make it this alive I'm adopting you because I'm a pedo ah that's <laughs> that's weird yeah it's really really strange so then the ship that you're on is well, the ship that you were on, Leon's on, is blown up obviously because it's exploded like four times already. Aye. It's like the engine room, you can only go back to it three more times. <laughs> oh my god. To figure out what's happening. So Barry's like, shit. Now that we've defeated everybody in this boat, we have to get Leon on the submarine, sorry. Get him on it so we can save him. So then, uh, again, you enter the engine room and you meet Leon, who's surprised that you're back obviously because you've double teamed him. 
Sorry, not double tower. Oh, double cross. <laughs> That's uh, take, take a turn of water. Yeah. Double yeah. tower. <laughs> so then Lucia's like Barry, I don't think that's Leon by the way, he's acting strange. And I can tell you with my zombie power that that's Aye. not him. So then that guy morphs into Leon morphs into the big bow again, so you ne- then you need to fight him as Barry. And you're like, oh Jesus Christ. Jesus, what? Yep. Is so it? they reuse I know games have done this before, but they actually reuse the same boss. Yeah. But you're just fighting with a different character, even though it makes no difference. No difference whatsoever. So it's like he's not stronger, he's not weaker. Yeah. It takes like the same amount of blows to kill this one as it did last time. Yeah. Uh, ridiculous. So you go, you beat him again, and then you need to go to another part of the engine room, and you find the real Leon, who's sitting about, and you go, all right, let, let's go. Uh, <laughs> so two of them are standing, and Barry pulls out his gun. No, actually, so you come through the door. And then there's two of the seas now. Oh, for fuck's sake! So, what? <laughs> right. So there's two of them now. You're like, oh, what? What's Barry going to do? Because he wants to adopt this one. <laughs> so, adopt both of them. <laughs> so he's going to go. Well, are you a twin? <laughs> it's like, nah, nah, you're a twin. So the girl grabs the knife off of Barry and goes, oh, watch this, because <laughs> she's now cured. I'm after Matt, obviously after killing the bow she's cured or something like oh, that. Oh, the green and red blood yeah. to come into play now. So that's what she does, she grabs the knife and goes watch this, gets the combat knife, the massive combat knife that you have in every single Resident Evil and goes watch this, cuts her hand wide open <laughs> and goes like that, instead of just pricking her finger, Aye. she just slashes her hand wide open and goes like that, look at this Barry, I love you, will you adopt me? <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, pissing out blood, that like red blood, then Barry's like that, smart thinking so we'll batter this bow again. So you need to fight him in his original form. And uh, you attack him and beat him, and then you, you, you need to run onto the submarine. So you chase, use three, so Leon, the lassie, and Barry run to the sub, and you get on it. And then you Are you sp- sure you don't want to make a roundabout trip to that engine room again? <laughs> we just came no. from the, it's like, hey, We need to go back in this sub because there's an engine room on there, we've not really checked out yet. But fair play. So they jump on it, and uh, basically that's the, the game finished there. You, there's a small cut screen where you see the vessel sink, I think it's called the Starlight. Whatever it is, you see it's sinking, the submarine's fine, and everyone goes, Oh, look at your hand, it's it's no healing. That means you're safe now because if you were a zombie, it would have he- healed by now. That sounds like a, a plus, though. Yeah, he's like, Oh, look <laughs> oh no, I don't have superpowers now. <laughs> you are definitely, I'm adopting you. <laughs> don't bother about stitches because I'm Barry, Barry Button. And then, uh, you go through to HQ again and you speak to them saying the mission's complete and they're heading home. Alright, oh, okay. Thanks. Does it not like any slight nod to I sure hold out hope we don't end up in some mansion? <laughs> no, no, it does not have any tie into any other game now. No. Not even the fact that there is a another recent evil game later on the timeline that's set in a ship. True. They don't even nod going, Oh god, I wonder what happened in that other ship. Because that's a prequel. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I thought they might have tied into it, but I don't know. Obviously they didn't, they didn't was, know. Yeah, yeah, it was like 15 years beforehand or whatever. So like somebody like, knock out this bullshit Game Boy Color game. <laughs> yeah. That's effectively what happened. Get it now. So that's what... I'm, my review was probably a bit shitty because I played it ages ago. Well, you covered the storyline. The storyline was amazed at. The storyline jumps in between everything and it's just so stupid. It's like, oh, you need to fight this guy and then he turns out he double-crossed him but he's not double-crossed him and then... It's just so shit. But anyway, at the end of the game, Leon's on the phone says, yep, we're coming home, it's going to be cool, everything's fine. Cuts into Leon, he's got little... It, it, they've obviously tried to give him like uh, a bit of texture, and it looks like he's, but it just looks like he's got lizard lips. And it, it's, it's <laughs> probably the funniest thing you'll see in the game. I won't try it. If you can find the cut screen, we'll put it in. I'll try. I'll try. Or I'll, I'm not playing through the game again. No. <laughs> just to find that ending. But if you can find a bit with Leon's lizard lips, you'll need to see because it's, it's comedy gold. But the kicker to it is... He's got a cut in his neck. Aye. And he's bleeding green. When does this game take place? <laughs> I don't know, but Leon's not the real Leon then at the end of the game. Ah. Oh. It's like, oh, Leon was on that ship and it they, just exploded. They were so sure of many a sequel. They set oh. it up for a sequel. <laughs> it's just the fact that they obviously went, yeah, we can work this into something. And it's just, it, it really didn't work. At this time, you still had people playing... Pokemon and all that and the Game Boy that's all I think of Game Boy Color I think of Mario, Zelda and Pokemon that's it like I mean very very simple games really ultimately very very simple gameplay any time I ever seen see whenever I seen like no it was like 
FIFA or whatever trying to be what ported over and never touched that because it's no. like it's obviously going to be absolute shit it's, it's games where you can play short bursts yeah and you go well like Pokemon it's a long game but yeah, the game you can save and pause and play later on there's like things you can grind your way yeah. through whereas this one was just there's no levelling up there's nothing it's nothing like that but you can go back and go oh do you know what I really want to play that game because I can get Leon to have a turn up costume because you can't you know tell what? you know what I'm just thinking here I think you could somehow maybe do like an XCOM type game based on because there's two star teams Aye. right the first one die in the first Resident Evil and then you get sent it's like oh we'll go over and see what the problem is ah dogs but Aye. it's like you could maybe do a prequel XCOM based with top down oh fuck I, I need to develop this I, I, I 3DS style yeah uh, like for that, that type of format you know and just have it top down turn based action I was going to say I, I don't understand why they've never done a Final Fantasy esque Resident Evil yeah go well okay you start off and you need to beat shit, shitty zombies but then you need to get to the end of the game and fight shitty zombies <laughs> bigger shitty zombies <laughs> and on the way there you need to level up and level up your weapons and stuff like that you get new attachments for them obviously but this obviously was the best idea they had at the time when yeah. top down annoying noises engine rooms clip to action scene first person view yeah, which oh, although as a slight nod to because obviously the original game was originally supposed to be a first person shooter mm-hmm. but that's before they were like yeah the hardware doesn't really go suit well for that plus I played this game alone in the dark and it's uh, let's just do that even though Alone in the Dark is complete bollocks compared yeah. to the first uh, Resident Evil but it does the first Resident Evil lifts quite heavily from Alone in the Dark uh, i.e. big mansion people going through 3D you know just I third won't. person view it, I don't know at the time I did what I always wanted to play this game because I was obsessed with my Game Boy Color at the time I played yeah. it non-stop and I put god knows how many hours into Pokemon and all that nonsense so I thought a cool Resident Evil would be good and uh, I remember the Resident Evil 1 remake was allegedly coming out for how it. How much did you pay for that? Well, your parents or whatever pay for this game? <sighs> I don't know, I think I got it as a present. Oh, I think, fuck. You imagine getting um, paying money for that? Because what, saving, yes. po- what, you know, <laughs> saving pocket, money? pocket money up? Because I remember having to do that. Most of my pocket money went to, like, you know, sweets and uh, PC magazines. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I thought. Well, basically, that's what we always you used to do. saving, there's nothing worse than getting a shitty game. That you saved up months for. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, I would imagine quite a few people were stung by this. Were start, I've, I, I, I knew of it. I remember, I kind of remember it being advertised years ago, like when I bought magazines. Um, but it, it sounds horrible. I mean, it, it doesn't even just sound dated. It just sounds like a horrible execution of, of Resident Evil on a Game Boy Color. And it. To be honest, it probably should have never been done anyway. They got given the license and they went, make a game for it, uh-huh. make it fun, and they didn't. And you can tell because you've played it. Bastards. <laughs> but yeah, do not recommend it. Do not play it. Do not waste your time. Listen to my horrible review of it. Ten out of ten. Now that I've got a few beers in me, let's cover a not so awesome game, and that's Resident Evil Outbreak for the PS2. Uh, it came out. Uh, around about 2003, 2004, uh, earlier obviously in uh, Japan and North America, they actually got you know the actual uh, full version of the game, you could say, because it was online capable. Like So the whole game was developed to be online game, so it was a co-op game. I remember reading this in magazines and thinking, oh my god, this game sounds amazing. Little did I know that Resident Evil plus co-op equals dog poo but <laughs> <laughs> you'll find out in Resident Evil 5 5 yeah but I remember reading about this and seeing pictures of it and it was uh, the pictures at the time I think it was released in Japan at the time and just like being that that looks amazing mm. uh, you have I think you, you you can have up to three other people playing with you so right. four people it's almost like a third person left for dead or it a, sounds awesome or right? Resident Evil SOCOM <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah effectively Um the, the thing was it opens uh, well, before I get to the cutscene the fucking PAL version do- isn't online capable not that even if I was to go to the shops and buy it now obviously nobody's playing this can online can you play it co-op though can you play it like if no, you have two there, playstations no, and together uh, maybe One, the, I know there's no local what as in local in the sense that two people split sit screen. on the couch sit and split screen I couldn't do that but you might be able to do one. I didn't test it 
Because you don't want to have to yeah. endure anyone else playing the game. So the game uh, for the PAL region, uh, when it was released, you couldn't play it multiplayer the way it was supposed to be played anyway. And uh, the PAL version, I think, was also missing a couple of missions. Really? Yeah. So basically, even though during this time, so this is uh, mid, getting to the mid 2000s, this is when we started seeing uh, you know, versions of games released in America not being so different from the PAL versions. Yeah. There used to always be a difference. Yeah, because they, they kind of reprogram it and the publishers would stick At this point, there wasn't. Market. Yeah, at this point, there wasn't much of a difference, but no, there's a huge difference in Resident Evil Outbreak. But the game starts with a pretty awesome cutscene. Cutscene really gets you in the mood. You're going, this cutscene looks good, uh, thematically works really, really well. You follow, it's like an underground like, sewer. You're following these rats and you're hearing all the gunfire and you're seeing snippets of the gunfire. And it's kind of letting you know this is at the point there's there's the zombie outbreaks happening but not everybody's aware of it mm-hmm. so it's like Resident Evil 2 time frame right yeah. it's about that time frame uh, it's really well done really enjoyed it then so it gets to, quite excited about playing the game I then. actually was that's that's the weird thing I was looking at it and going this game might be good like this it looks alright I may have found the gem <laughs> of the Resident Evil series why does nobody talk no, about, no this about this game <laughs> I was thinking Oh my god, I have. I, does anybody know about this game? <laughs> so, you get into the game and you select, there's a character select, and every character, I can't remember how many, I know how many characters, eight characters, there you are, eight characters that all have different skill sets, eh, like some can carry more than others, okay. some. That sounds like Resident Evil 1, but yes. Jill could carry more than yeah. Chris. Except you've got eight different people, and it's like. Get, like, one guy starts with like a good gun or mm-hmm. whatever, right? But can't carry as much, you know, stuff like that. So, create right away they're trying to create a team dynamic. Yeah. So when you're selecting your team, right? Very very cool. Pal version, you're out of luck because you just select one. And, and you don't have a team around you. Yeah, and they, they <laughs> the team around you. Oh, you do have a team then. You do. That's okay. okay. So it's all AI. You think the oh, fuck? We think the AI is bad in like Resident Evil Five and Six. Oh my God. Uh, Res- <laughs> Resident Evil Resident Evil Outbreak AI um, is I'm, I'm, I'm hard pushed to even say AI because intelligence it's, it's not intelligence it's no. like A A N non intelligence <laughs> <laughs> it's basically whatever they've programmed they've programmed this AI so you jump into the game you've got five scenarios there should be I think seven or eight scenarios but for some reason the power uh, just, just just uh, trim some of them uh, you jump in you select you can select whatever like, right, so you can everything's the, unlocked level 5 straight away if you want to so it doesn't work like that it's not like level no you would think if you're playing a game you, you go through the game there's a storyline like yeah a sequential start from order. A to B yeah you would think that nope it's just everything's unlocked and it's like yeah this one's kind of hard that one's kind of easy I oh, mean right, you okay. do generally you would work it from 1 to 2 to oh, so, so it's like when you play, uh, like I don't know, you know those modes in FIFA, like it used to be Knockout Kings as well, you had mm-hmm. to recreate old game, old football scores or boxing yes. matches where you had to go, okay, you can play this one, this yep. one's easier because like, you're Mike Tyson fighting yeah. a bum or and just like Real Madrid playing. Just similar team. to those ideas, again, you have certain goals that you need to get to. Okay, like, as yeah, in, yeah, yeah. Or you need to score two goals before what, the 89th minute. Ah, yeah, whatever, so, you know, like, stuff like, like that. Our, our previous episode when we spoke about wrestling you, games and you had to do the attitude era. Yeah, you have certain goals in this as well that you need to do. Okay. And I think, I think, I'm not 100% on this, it's slightly um, random. Alright. So the items you need were, are in random places each time you play it. That makes sense. Again, m- makes sense because you've only got a certain amount of scenarios. If you're playing it online, it keeps it fresh. Yep. So uh, I pick my character, I start the game. Scenario one, I'm in the pub. As you do, um, Sean of the day. As I start most scenarios, <laughs> most stories I tell, I'm in the pub. Uh, zombie outbreak, oh, what's happening? Guy gets bit and then other people, so your squad are around you. I didn't get to select them by the way, they're okay. just like, at first I was like, so am I just playing this myself? Which, you know, I was, but then oh but you think if you were to do if it's like say you said maybe a four player co-op yeah. in Japan you'd then go well okay I've went this guy who can carry more items so I'll choose someone else with a powerful gun mm-hmm. but can't carry as many items and you could kind of 
space out over four players rather than just going okay well the computer picks I will have yeah no nothing like characters that. who I, I can't on. select it just who you plays start, to your strengths and helps your weaknesses nope I just selected the guy with the gun that's that's how I went it's like guy's got a gun good guy right so I start with him uh, we're in the pub the pub zombies happen <laughs> uh, and I have no idea what I'm doing I'm running around circles I'm like I've got to go somewhere I've got to kill zombies what's going on uh, and then see uh, markers showing me where my other squad members are okay. at all times and they seem to be doing kind of what I'm doing at the moment randomly running around getting bit by zombies running into zombies that's the weird thing about it is you'd think they would kind of program it stay away from zombies mm-hmm. especially if you are unarmed which most of them were no, they just run right into zombies. It's almost everything seems random with the the AI. Like they just randomly go through doors and stuff. I'm going to assume this was then pushed out quite early. Uh, the AI was then programmed if it was an online game, and they went, "Shit, we'll just need to stick it into <sighs> it well, and update the zombie AI." The the thing is, the speaking of the game pushed out. I've actually got a note here, and it's uh, the game when I was kind of researching the game didn't go into too much depth. The game just went through much so much development hell. It get canned. I think two times really yeah twice it was like no nah, we're stopping development on it fuck this and it was kind of it looked as if it was never going to get a release but it developed they apparently put so much into the game that it was like oh it'd be a waste to can all this so they, they did push it out the door in like Japan and North America just like you know what we've got these scenarios developed just tidy it up a bit and push it out kind of sounds like the mercenaries add on it feels like an add on that's a weird thing it feels like a game mode of a Resident Evil game like, like it, it could be an added extra to Resident Evil 4 yeah the, I'll, right I'll go with pros right pros opening cutscene awesome the idea pretty good obviously execution not so good but the idea is good uh, the actual graphics and the controls they forgo the tank controls there's no okay. tank controls uh, it's like you know, run about the way you would control you know any third person um, adventure game nowadays like you know they just move around as, as you push the, thumb, the thumbstick um, it's just everything else is broken <laughs> it's you yeah, imagine releasing Le- like not like that Left 4 Dead imagine releasing Left 4 Dead and it's like oh shit oh you by the way in PAL you can't play Left 4 Dead multiplayer then what the fuck's the point it's, that's the way it feels uh, so the the PAL I don't know why they even bothered releasing the PAL version obviously so also the Resident Evil what name wasn't dirt back then so they thought we'll still get but some sales off it it's the whole game's developed as a multiplayer game there's no way you need you actually do really badly need your AI partners to cooperate with you but all they do is spend their time running into rooms getting bit run back out hell hell so but when they die, is your game over? Do you need to restart, or can you continue the game like Left 4 Dead without a team member? No, I'm not sure. I think they can die, but you can continue. Mm-hmm. But I think um, you, you, I think you can continue if it's just yourself. But by that time, I was just, I was getting so frustrated by it. Um, it was, I was just willingly wanting to die. <laughs> and I, <laughs> that's, uh, I was just kind of seeing what would happen if I was uh, attacked. And what happens is there's a lot of slight kind of if you get knocked down by a zombie and you're de- you're effectively dead, but you can be revived to a certain oh, point. Oh right, okay. So like, so it has like that other multiplayer style games, so like Battlefield, you can be yeah. revived if you. Uh, in a weird way, this game is ahead of its time, but it's it's almost like if you were to develop a game, a multiplayer game from it, you'd be going right. What was everything that that tried and failed? Yeah, we will do we'll that. Except, it. yeah. <laughs> So that's, I never, I didn't complete all the scenarios because I, I couldn't even complete scenario one because the, the AI partners, I couldn't get them to help me enough so as I could find, you need to basically each scenario, find these items, you need these items to get further in the scenario, you need to do that. It's just like that, if anyone's played Left 4 Dead, you know how it works, it's like you start from A, get to point B, right, that's, that's pretty much it. This is the way it works except this is a third person Resident Evil game of that really except everything's horrible Mm -hmm. and that's that's pretty much how I would put it everything's pretty horrible and the idea of releasing a multiplayer game that's built exclusively as a multiplayer game and then releasing it in a region 
and you're not able to play it multiplayer. I'm going to assume it's because maybe we only had dial-up connections really back then, and then we. I think so. I think it. Uh, I know the Dreamcast used dial-up connections, but you're not looking to play with other people. I never intensely PS2 online. I wouldn't even know how I, to do I only knew at the time maybe one person with a network adapter and it was because he got it free with Solcom and he played Solcom online for a few bits and I went yeah, it was nigh impossible because again I, we were still think we are quite far behind most of other countries with our broadband connections yeah I mean it's as I keep saying it's the idea the idea is pretty good and the idea is pretty much if they were to do it now people would just be going well it's left for dead Um so but why that, are you when next time Left 4 Dead comes about sometimes we go oh, that's, that's Resident Evil Outbreak I've already played Left 4 Dead back when it was called Resident Evil Outbreak yeah. uh, no it's it's, it's it is literally a broken game no it is I, I, I think the game is broken as soon as the AI it has isn't good enough to help you mm-hmm. um, or I mean even if you were to take that away say you were going right the AI's gubbed but you don't need their help but in this game you generally do because all they do is hinder you because they're getting themselves attacked or they're leading zombies into the room you. you're in and you're too busy trying to obviously like, get items and stuff and it's like oh cheers you just led three zombies into the room cheers no it's like stuff like that uh, the AI, AI is completely random but so basically if you can imagine playing imagine playing Resident Evil 1 you're playing it uh, and you've got three other like Jill Valentine's or you know Chris Redfield's West. Uh, so basically, you're playing with three Weskers. Yeah, yeah, basically, or Barry Burton's. It's like <laughs> here's some zombies. I'm a good guy. No, I'm a bad guy, really. No, I'm a good guy. Uh, it's imagine that. You say, and your partners were just all they do is spend the whole time going into the hallway, getting the attention of dogs. Go back into the room you're in, and those dogs coming into those rooms. That's pretty much how it works. I so, think interested to see what kind of reviews it got in America and Japan if they actually did get to play it with proper AI rather than I think it could have been a good pretty uh, a pretty good early uh, multiplayer gaming experience I think I mean if it's the exact same if it's it plays the exact same and everybody's obviously playing as a team yep. I think it could have been pretty good I think it uh, it would have been decent at worst I think um, but I didn't grow up in Japan or North America, so... Neither, neither, so, so we'll never know. Never know. I, I really uh, don't want to know now, because that, the game really pissed me off. It is unbelievably frustrating. I just can't believe they decided to release a co-op game as a single player and say, get on with it. I would love to know their thinking. I would actually love to see... Um, there, oh, there's probably a way for me to look up this, but to see the actual review ratings... I'm assuming this get reviewed in magazines back in the day. Yeah. I would, I would really like to see what reviewers would like to do with a, a multiplayer game that you can't play multiplayer. That's it's really... I know they released a second version. Was that online? They online. did. Uh, they released a second version which had the chapters. I think it had the chapters that you didn't get. Uh-huh. And with, with other bonuses and stuff like that. I wonder, I do wonder if that did have online capabilities here. Do you think it was a, basically nowadays a patched version of the game? It kind of sounds like that, yeah. doesn't it? I would imagine it wouldn't be worth their time just throwing that in and having it offline only. Yeah. So I, I would like to assume, uh, what, I can't remember, what was it called? Oh, but it, it was something... Outbreak... Outbreak operations two. or something. It was something really, or like, you know, a big long title. Uh, what case book or uh, oh, I, I know there was a second version but I can't tell you yeah, I just knew it was but a I, d- I didn't have the second version I only had this version and yeah um, nobody's missing anything from this game no. I don't. I, I mean I wasn't really uh, I remember as I said remember reading about it back in the day but I completely forgotten about this game until doing this podcast and I was like holy shit this is now getting to the point where we've outlived Resident Evil 4 and it's, the games are now gradually starting to go downhill from here this game came out 2003, 2004, when did, when did um, Resi 4, I think, would have been released already? Uh, no, Resi 4 came out 2005, so this was just, oh, you imagine playing oh, this just before? That, is that the UK release? Because obviously Japan will probably would have got Resi 4 before that. It would have been, it's, so it's round about the time of the release of Resi 4, mm-hmm. so, yeah. 
Oh god, the game was really uh, Capcom. You could already see cracks appearing in Capcom. Yeah. Essentially, even though it, would, it wouldn't have been Capcom's uh, A team developing this, uh, in a sense, but at the same time, uh, you kind of do get the feeling that they're it's they're, they're really wanting this multiplayer thing, uh, and like the we've kind of we're going to say about Resident Evil Four is probably the last really good single player. Um, experience like complete single player experience yeah well that's the thing also you got Resident Evil 1 good Resident Evil 2 amazing Resident Evil 3 for what it was good game decent yeah it wasn't Resident Evil 2 and then Resident Evil 4 totally changed everything yep. and then it even changed that style of game because now games did start to copy Resident Evil 4 I'd we'll probably will speak yeah. about right. well we will uh, cover Resident Evil 4 although it'll just, it's just going to be gushing but it's uh, it did totally t- change the franchise which which people thought was going to be for the better and yeah. sadly it wasn't oh, and that's what hurts but yeah I would say this is when you would really see this is the start of Capcom well would you say it's the start of Capcom really really showing their Resident Evil product because Game Boy Color game but stuff like that yeah the spin off this feels like a spin off even though it's on the PS2 yeah it's it's more I think it's to do with the fact that okay they've made Game Boy games but let's be honest there's not really any massively great Game Boy games other than like Nintendo own branded games yeah them using their own licenses and pushing out games like that whereas you've got a third party developer making this game and they're not you're not going to get a, an amazing Resident Evil Game Boy game because it's totally different from Aye. the PlayStation and it's you're used to these 3D environments but I would love you know what I would love to know I, I, I know it's like we've got like five listeners but I would love to know if anybody had experience of buying Resident Evil Outbreak um, when it was first released over here and what their real experience was of it because my experience is obviously it's so many years removed. It's almost it's a, it's a decade removed, essentially from when it when it was released. So it's tough for me to kind of gauge how disappointed I would have been yeah. with us. So, like the fact, you know, I would imagine there would have been a lot of disappointed people buying what they thought was a multiplayer game. Uh, something that they could even I would assume they would even think you could play at least two player mm-hmm. on the one console. Well. What I'm going to do tonight is go back and look over old Angel Fire and Geo City pages yeah. of Resident Evil to see what people really thought. Yeah, that might be an idea. Oh well. But there's Neil Bell Outbreak. It sucks, but I don't think that actually surprises anyone. So that brings us to the end of the first part of our look at the Resident Evil franchise. Uh, we have, uh, at the very least, a second part to come along, but it's probably going to be actually three parts, and hopefully that'll be in the next few weeks. I uh, hope you've enjoyed what you've listened to so far and watched so far. Uh, if you like what you see in here, give us a little like on the, the YouTube video and a wee subscribe if you can, if you feel like it. If you don't, just give us a dislike, tell us we're shite, you know, anything, any feedback's good. So, yeah, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye!